This is not designed for uh, anything to uh, do in your backyard or anything like that. Uh, just be aware, these are for educational purposes. Anyways, what I want to go over, I've got several questions. And I had a question on a bar and chain. It wasn't oil and white, what the guy wanted. That's a pretty common issue out here on the West Coast. We have a lot of heavy pitch and, and uh, stuff like that, plugging up. <clears throat> we don't learn this years ago. Now this is just a common bar. It looks like a could be a husky mount. It's very old. It's got that old roller on it. You see that. Uh, what you want to do is take your die cutter, a little grinder, and you're going to, on the pad side, closer to the crankcase, you're going to cut a notch, not all the way through, but just from where the oiler port is, just to cut a notch. And cut it at a little bit of an angle, cut it to the rail. We've done that for years, did it back in the 70s, and the guys were running the very long bars, and they were wanting to get longer, uh, uh, they were wanting to get more oil to their longer bars, but they were working in a dug fur and real pitchy stuff. Doesn't plug up, works beautiful, just a good little um, hack to do on that. And just want to get that out for the James out there. <clears throat> and I got a few other questions here I want to go over. We had uh, uh, questions on some chainsaw repair. A gentleman's got a 2100 Husky barn on. I used to build the vents. You can't get the vents anymore for them. I used to build the vents for them. And I'm going to give you what you need, a part number, to build a vent. Uh, you know, find somebody that has the uh, tools to do this. Uh, just be careful when you're doing anything. You're going to need a Husqvarna number, 501-87-3101. And that's a Husqvarna part number. That's a vent, you're very, you know, it's a very common vent on your 372s. They have changed them now, there are different vents on those. This is the old black one with the little white, I call it the little white pill on the top, it's got the little uh, porous material on the top. And what you're going to do is you're going to buy that vent, they're like 12 bucks, and you're going to cut it, very even cut, get rid of this bottom part. Then you're going to get the steel number 000 989 0516. It's a little grommet. Just a little grommet, and it'll uh, lubricate it, and it'll pop right in that uh, hole where the uh, vent is on that 2100. And then you're going to lubricate this and you go slide it right into there and makes a nice vent for that saw. And Bruce is a uh, he's got a uh, several steel bars he wants to run on his Husqvarna chainsaw and so uh, there are adapters for that and Tell you what, Bruce, after the show, uh, give me an email, sawking at hotmail.com. And I've got the part numbers that you need. King at hotmail.com and what those are are adapters that you can actually mount to the Husqvarna crankcase and then your steel bars will fit onto it. Now be aware it's not a 100% adjustment as far as you're adjusting the chain. I put those on for years and a lot of times I've got to do different things to make everything work just perfect but uh, if you got some steel bars and you want to run them on your 372s, uh, 385, 390s, even up to the bigger saws, 395s there are some adapters, and uh, they are available at the uh, Myrtle Creek Saw Shop, and I'll give you that phone number. Five 
541-863-5387. Those adapters uh, work really slick. I've used them for years and uh, it really works nice. And then Dan, he's got some issues. He's, uh, there's, this is a question I get all the time and it's really difficult to answer it. Uh, goes back to chainsaw grinding and uh, what angles do you use? You know, you got your steel version, steel chain, Oregon chain, uh, Carlton, which is owned by Oregon. There's other manufacturers out there. There's the uh, aftermarket ones, all kinds of things. <coughs> I, uh, I've used all kinds of grinders. I've used the top end, uh, Sylvie's, the uh, Symington's, uh, all of them. If you're a firewood cutter or cutting uh, cords of wood, blocks, stuff, stuff, stuff like that, the Oregon grinder is probably one of the better choices and the reason being it's pretty much bulletproof. You really have to work to uh, cause issues with it. Um, I use a 3 16 wheel. You do have to hand shape the wheel. They don't come shaped. You've got to hand shape it. Um, and the angles I used was uh, the 55 angle with the uh, 25 to 30 spax angle with the 10 degree tilt on the square tooth, not the chipper tooth. Chippers are round. Let's see, where's my tooth at? There it is. Chippers, I've got this rounded edge. Chisels are perfectly square. And, uh, you know, like I said, you could ask, and I have, ask 10 different guys, 10 different ways they grind or change, and I go, so I got 11 different answers, maybe 12. And uh, you're never going to get the uh, answer you want there on it. Uh, go with the uh, Oregon uh, angles, and uh, you can experiment a little bit. With all grinders, there's all ways you can change the angle a little bit. But uh, you just stick with those angles, and if you want to, I'll send you the, I've got a uh, really nice, uh, let me show you here. Hang on, hang tough, guys. get this gives you all the angles you need for the different chains the wheel sizes everything and it's as close as you're going to get to the holy grail for telling you how to grind the chains it doesn't talk about steel chains but you can you can uh, figure out what steel chain you're working with compared to this and you can get some angles and uh, if you do it right knock the rakers down properly get the angles there it will cut good for you And I've got a question on the MS-261. Those come usually with a 325 pitch, real short bore. We call it short bore out here on the West Coast. Most everybody out here runs a 24, 24 inch. I've had guys run 28 on that. Yes, you can run a 28 on that. That's how you set it up. One way to set up that for a 28 inch is to uh, go with a skip tooth, 325 chisel tooth. And you can file it around or chisel either one. Does a beautiful job. It's the matter of having the skip tooth, which is less teeth, so it pulls through the wood better. And that's what you want. You couldn't put a 24 inch or 28 inch with a full comp and expect the saw to perform good. It just won't do it. But with a skip tooth chain, you can keep the RPMs up and it does a beautiful job. But he wants to change his to a 3 8, which I've done a lot. And what you would need is the uh, change the 325 sprocket to a 3 8 pitch sprocket. Now most of the steels we get out here are the floating rim. If you've got a spur, which uh, <clears throat> we don't see a whole lot out here, the spur is a one piece. Actually, let's see if I can get this picture up here. That's a spur sprocket. <clears throat> That's a floating rim right there. Spur and rim. 
you get this drum and you can go from three two five to three eighths easily and uh you can change that to a three eighths pitch you just get a steel bar and and a lot of people don't realize on a lot of the three eighths bars if it is a replaceable nose all you do is change the nose that's all you do and then you're up and running you can run your three eighths chain on it okay hang on a second here <clears throat> This guy, this gentleman here, he's got this really nice home light, uh, let's say 1050 uh, home light. <clears throat> he's trying to take the clutch off. You can see the arrow, direction that you're supposed to turn at. It's almost always a left-handed thread, meaning turn it clockwise to get it off. Home light made a special tool. <clears throat> I've got one around here somewhere and some of my tools. Basically, let me see if I can... Draw you a little diagram of what you need. I've made a lot of these for different clutches. You can get a piece of uh, steel. You go to drill a couple holes in it. You go to <clears throat> what I used to do was to put a little bit of grease. In, in each hole, offset, either use those or these, a little bit of grease, double grease, and then you're going to set your piece of metal onto it and get a marking of where you want to drill those holes. You're going to drill those holes and you're going to put our two roll pins in there, split pins, roll pins. And then you've got a tool that you can actually turn this clutch with. Here's the tick, here's the, here's the caveat on this, or here's the uh, way to do this though, you can get in all kinds of trouble, you've got to stop that piston. You can't have that engine turning. Home light on that particular model he's working on, on the very bottom of the crankcase on the starter side, they used to have a little hole drill and a <clears throat> little hole in the flywheel. You would stick a roll pin into there, or a, or a punch, rotate that till it locked. Well. Some of those were on so tight that I've seen guys actually break the crankcase, so be careful doing it. You can also take the spark plug out, <coughs> take a long piece of rope, put a loop in it. Piece of rope with a loop, number five rope, four rope, four and a half, five. And run that piston in that cylinder Here's the piston right here. Run it down a ways. Don't have it near the top. Run it down. Spark plug hole. Put that rope right into there. Gently roll that piston up in onto against that rope and then apply pressure. I have seen guys damage their uh, cylinders doing this too, so you gotta be careful. If everything is still tight, very tight, you don't feel comfortable doing it, you can take your little butane torch, heat that clutch up. Just heat it up around it, just around the crankshaft. Don't put any heat right on the crankshaft, but heat it around it. And it'll release. I've released hundreds of them, so just be aware of that. My guy in there, he's just talking about the storm, isn't he? Okay. Okay, right, let's get back here. Oh, a lot of guys are having trouble finding the helicoil kit for your spark plugs. I've got the part number here. You know, it's not an actual helicoil part number. It's an aftermarket one. Uh, <clears throat> but it appears to be working good. Uh, you know, you can also, if you can find a legit parts house, they can look up that helicoil kit for your uh, spark plug. But I'm going to give you the part number here. Right there. How you doing, Eric? And so use that part number there, and that can get you a uh, helicoil that you can put in there. Now be aware, go back to the drawing board here.
cylinder, spark plug, hole, stripped out threads. When you put that helicoil in, you want to measure. You don't want those threads hanging down low into that cylinder combustion chamber. You can cause some severe engine damage. So you need to measure, and you can actually cut those with a good pair of dikes before you install it. You can cut that excessive spring out from the top, because you've got a little hook here where you, your tool hooks onto it. Cut it from the top before you put it in, before you put it on your tool, and then you can install it. A little bit of practice, if you've got some old cylinders, you'll become uh, very, very popular for being able to save these cylinders. You don't have to take the cylinder off after you get onto this. You don't have to take it off. We were shown at the factory how to use these helicoils, and these are not the inserts. The inserts I don't use. Don't, I know a lot of guys use them. They think they're great. I don't. Had too many issues with them. I've had them uh, heat and cold and come loose. They're a temporary fix. The helicoil is a almost a hundred percent fix for the life of the saw or longer. I mean, it's just amazing. But you've got to uh, get it in there right, and uh, and the flutes on your tool that you're tapping it with. You want to grease that with a heavy grease, and that collects all the fine aluminum shavings. But they showed us at the factory actually did this. It was amazing because we were concerned over it. <clears throat> they took shavings about the approximate size of what we'd be using and just dumped them right in the venturi, the carburetor, and ran the saw. It's so soft material is that it just it doesn't do anything. So blow it out good, of course. Clean it real good. Uh, get some solvent and then really flush it out good and blow it out. And it works beautiful. Done it for years. And I got a couple more questions here before we get out of here. Let's see here. Hang on a second, guys. Oh, okay. Gentlemen, I uh, want to get some cylinders re, re chromed. You know, they get damaged. He wants to get them re chromed. Uh, some of these cylinders are hard to find, pistons are hard to find, and so you're in the hunt for trying to find you stuff. Preferably if you can find a new cylinder, uh, a lot of the chrome's good, pistons good, you're fine, that works beautiful. You know, some of these you can't find, <coughs> uh, USA Chrome, I believe that's how they go by. Let me look here and see. Hang on, let me get something. Just a second, guys. Bear with me here. I'm trying to, trying to find this here. <laughs> There's an outfit back east that does the chroming on these. The, <clears throat> they've gotten so popular, though, they won't just take individual guys' cylinders. They want you to go through a dealer. I'm not a dealer anymore, so I uh, couldn't help you there. But they still do it. You just need to find a dealer. And usually it'll be a, uh, a bike shop. That because uh, they rechrome these all the time. And uh, that's gonna be your uh, your best bet for finding it, but uh, let me see if I can get the name up here for you. <clears throat> Okay, here's their US Chrome, and uh, there is a phone number. Phone number there. And like I said, they used to, uh, you didn't have to be a dealer to send in your Chrome. You just call them up, schedule it. They're about a month and a half out. They would Chrome, uh, they, what they do, we, I had some done. They uh, bore out, it's a very minute amount of Chrome on those cylinders. They bore it out. They bake the thing in the oven, uh, cooks out all the uh, impurities. I mean, they don't melt it or anything, but they get it warm, and that releases all the oils and things you don't want. And uh, then they have a process where they uh, rechrome it. It's kind of like, I don't know if you ever watched how they chrome bumpers or parts or everything. It's, uh, they hit a couple electrodes up to it and uh, got their mixture in there and the chrome, plate it, and then they polish it, or they hone it out, polish it out, and it works beautiful. But anyway, like I said, they don't accept 
you can call them and see who your local dealer is, but they don't accept you just shooting one in there and, and doing that. So, hope that helps you out there. But anyway, got a one, maybe one more here. Let's see here. <clears throat> I still get the question on the oil. <clears throat> right up to my uh, vintage saws, uh, right up to my 1947, 48 saws, I run 50 to 1. Husqvarna or steel oil, I don't, I know there's AMS oil and guys swear up and down at, with it and I prefer to use the Husqvarna or steel 50 to 1, good quality gas, I actually, on the very, very old saws I will use the non-ethanol but on the others I use the ethanol blend, I've had zero problems with it, I know I'll get mud thrown at me for saying that but uh, you know, Ethanol in Oregon has been here for 20 some years and everybody's afraid of it. The, the uh, answer to that though is to fresh fuel from the gas station, mark your fuel tanks, date them, and you won't have any issues. But if you uh, let it set, of course, for anything, any amount of time, ethanol or non-ethanol uh, gas with really poor fuel cap fuel cans, you know, your fuel cans that don't seal properly, you're going to have problems any way you go. So, anyway, uh, that's going to wind it down. Uh, yeah, shoot me an email if you uh, have some more questions or if you would like some copies of the, some of the stuff we talked about today. And we'll try to shoot for next Saturday. Uh, if you got some more uh, questions on your chainsaws that you want answered, and we'll see what happens. Okay guys, have a great day. It's Saturday. I think we're going to uh, load up the, the horse, saddle it up, and probably head to town. Have a great day.